All right, folks, for uh, Decade Duels, we are randomly picking the year from each decade and comparing the MVP winners with the runners-up and deciding whether it was fair for them to be awarded the MVP or if it was foul. So the randomized year that we ended up getting is 1912, the dead ball era, everyone's favorite decade of baseball. That year, uh, the MVP was awarded to Tris Speaker, a uh, center fielder for the Boston Red Sox. Uh, he beat up the runner-up, Ed Walsh, who was a pitcher for the Chicago White Sox. The Red Sox actually won the World Series that year. They finished the, the division by winning by 14 games over the next team. Um, so it was always the top team in the league versus the top team in the other league to face in the World Series. Uh, Boston had a stacked lineup, uh, stacked pitching staff. I mean, they were way ahead of everybody else at the time. Uh, Trish Speaker's numbers uh, were, were excellent. I mean, he was top 10 in the uh, offensive categories. But his Boston team was first in home runs, RBIs, runs, and runs per game that year. Uh, so that means everybody on that team was was doing their job and hitting. It wasn't just one guy. Um, so they really did a team effort in terms of uh, offensive production. And they had five players with wars above eight. Uh, three players were in the top ten for RBIs. I mean, Tris Speaker's uh, war was 10.1. Um, Ed Walsh's is 12.1 because he pitched and uh, he hit a little bit, um, but mostly pitched. Um, so just if you look at those numbers alone, Tris Speaker, you think, oh, wow, look at those numbers. He won the World Series. Uh, finished first in home runs. He, he, maybe he deserves it. Um, but let's look at Ed Walsh, the runner-up. I mean, his team, the White Sox, weren't very good. They finished two games above 500. Uh, they were fourth place in the league. 28 games back of the Boston Red Sox. I mean, normally you wouldn't see a guy finish second, let alone uh, first, for if his team didn't even come close to the playoffs. Um, but his war was higher, like I said. Uh, um, they were the highest career war for both guys. Uh, the White Sox team itself uh, were below at league average near nearly every category in every stat, major stat, pitching and hitting. Um, but uh, Ed Walsh finished first in games played, games started, and games finished. Like that's a pretty huge feat for a pitcher, even for that time. He finished. He faced the most batters too. Like and he finished third in WHIP to face that many the guys and have a third uh, best WHIP. That's pretty remarkable considering. And the games he played eleven games against Boston. And he finished 5-5-1. Five, five, and one. Yes, there was a tie. I don't know how that happened. But uh, he had a .82 ERA with nine complete games and a shutout against the, the World Series champion Red Sox. The Red Sox were averaging 5.19 runs per game that year. And Ed Walsh, against Ed Walsh, 2.6. Like, I mean, if that doesn't scream more valuable to his team than anything else, I don't know what does. But unfortunately, they didn't have head-to-head uh, -head stats until, I think, 1918. Um, so to speak of speaker as the MVP... I call this foul. Ed Walsh was way more valuable to his team than than Trish Speaker was. I mean, when you, I'm sorry, but you look up the definitions of most valuable players. Uh, it's not about winning championships or anything like that. I mean, he didn't even finish first in his own team in lot, some categories or the league. Um, so you can't base it on stats alone. So how was Trish Speaker more important than Ed Walsh? Ed Walsh carried the White Sox even to a two games above 500 record. But at the same time, you take away Trish Speaker from the Red Sox, that team doesn't miss a beat. You take Ed Walsh out of the White Sox, they finish dead last. So I call foul on this. What do you got, Norbert, for the National League MVPs? Well, uh, I got uh, Larry Doyle, not to be confused with uh, Major League Terry Doyle. Foul uh, 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 <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Larry Doyle was awarded the uh, National League MVP uh, that year in 1912. He played for the New York Giants. Uh, second baseman in the sixth major league season, he had a 330 excellent batting average, uh, a 10 home runs, and 91 RBIs. Uh, he stole 36 uh, bases at that time and 98 uh, runs and 184 hits. Uh, it looks to me that, uh, that those were great stats. Uh, like he, he was a pretty good hitter at the time, uh, much, uh, you know, on the sixth major league season, so much younger. Uh, then the runner-up, Honus Wagner, who hit 324 that year with seven home runs and 101 RBIs. He had an uh, on-base percentage of 395 and had, a, and had 181 hits. Uh, he was in his uh, 15th Major League season. Um, Honus Wagner was, was older than, um, than Larry Doyle. Um, equal, e almost equal excellent stats. Uh, really good players uh, back in the... Uh, Back in the 1910s, uh, Honus Wagner, as you know, is a Hall of Famer. He played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, like definitely two two good hitters, but uh, 
uh, as far as the stats are concerned, I believe that they it, it is fair to say that Larry Doyle uh, got the MVP honors. Uh, like he he um, he was in a sixth major league season. He was a younger younger fresh uh, a more fresh player. Uh, Honus Wagner was in his fifteenth year. And uh, interesting fact that the uh, that that Wagner. Uh, 101 RBIs was the very last time he hit over 100 RBIs. Um, uh, in his uh, earlier earlier in his career, uh, he had uh, record numbers uh, back in uh, you know in the in his early playing days. So uh, yeah, Larry Larry Doyle. Um, uh, it seems fair that he got the MVP honors. And inter- another interesting fact about uh, the MVP awards back in uh, 1911. Uh, from 1911 to 1914, it was named after Chalmers Automobile, and uh, it was named after Hugh Chalmers, uh, the owner of that automobile company. So, uh, yeah, definitely a little piece piece of history there for sure. Uh, yes, Larry Doby uh, seems fair to uh, my 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 apologies, Larry Doyle. Uh, Wait, what did you say, Larry Doby? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, so many names in baseball out there. Yes, definitely Larry Doyle deserves that 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 MVP that year. All right. Uh, well, I wonder if they got a free car out of that. If they were giving away free cars at the time. <laughs> most likely, most likely. They were yeah, right. They were probably giving them. A, they're probably getting a free oil change. That's all they were getting back in 1912. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comments below.